Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Luke Kelsey here from Grover Nature. So today I just wanted to give, a, give you a quick tour of the garden, show you what's going on. It's early spring, it's 1st of March and it's still quite cold, so I've not really got much to do right now. But the foundation's in place uh, and I just wanted to show you and take you through what's going on. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So I'm starting at the top of the patch, you can see it's just like the skeletons of the trees and the fruit bushes. Nothing's really started to grow just yet, it's all still in dormant, it's all still dormant through the winter. But as you can see, I've what I've done is I've put in a lot more berry bushes this year, so I'm going for a lot more perennial on this left side, and a lot more annuals on that side. So I've chosen to structure because I think it's easier to manage and it's actually going to be more create more of a food forest field on the left side so I won't really have to touch this side at all and it will still produce year on year and get better and better um, but yeah briefly what I've done is I've put in black currants down here red currants down here this strip here uh, these are different early varieties and late varieties here so these are red currants as well it's quite hard to see but yeah you see red currants here red currants and then I've got some gooseberries here and here so I'll just try and give you a better idea what it looks like because it's hard to see so I think it's easier from this angle of the light so that's all on the ground covering here and now I've got a Victoria plum tree that's gonna hopefully grow over them so as you can imagine this summer it's gonna look completely different how it's gonna look I'm actually gonna fill in a lot of these gaps in the ground with potatoes uh, did the last my last video I talked about potatoes quite a bit um, yeah, so that's basically the top quarter patch, and then this is left left empty for the herbs that I'm going to put in. I'm going to buy a lot more perennial herbs. So as you can see, I'm going to go for a lot more perennials. I think it's the best way to get abundance year and year of little work. I've still got some perennials from the previous years. Got some chicory, uh, some lavender, thyme, oregano, sage. And that's actually a red currant bush from a few years ago got a lot bigger so that'll produce this year as well so I'll just go down fully on this left side first and I'll show you the right side got another apple tree there so this was planted in 2019 so still early on but hopefully it'll produce fruit this year um, which is pretty pretty exciting because I've not really had any, much from this top top fruit trees yet this is actually an asparagus patch so these should be coming up fairly soon because it's just coming into spring they're a very, very good perennial uh, perennial vegetable to get in your garden. And again, some more red currants. And all this left side down here, I've actually put raspberry canes. So I'm going to get a wall of raspberries. I've got 10 to 15 of them. This one is Autumn Bliss. So I've chosen to basically get the varieties that will stagger the harvest throughout the season. So with these raspberries, for example, I've gone for some early, some late. Same with the black currants and red currants, done the same strategy, splitting them evenly between. And also chosen the varieties that are actually produced best in my kind of area. So, for example, if you're in a different country or South of England, you might go for a slightly different variety. It's the one that I've chosen because it's slightly cooler up here. Um, yeah, so variety selection is actually really, really important to get, you know, abundant food year in year. It'll give you the best, best production for your money, so you don't have to waste space and time growing something that doesn't really work in your area and um, so yeah I thought I'd just make that point clear and then yeah I'll carry on with the tour so I've just covered that area up there you know it's still hard to see because these wood chips wood chips sort of camouflage the trees and the sticks uh, that's another apple tree there this bit is just like a wild area there's a lot of perennial flowers it's really good for the yeah for the birds butterflies same with this just completely left it and it's just gonna grow back itself really well this is a jostaberry bush he had some swiss chard here on the ground last year but i just cut it down and then it'll hopefully rot into the ground if not it might regrow itself so yeah some some shoots are actually coming up again now uh, that's another apple tree these two are red gooseberry bushes here 
So they'll grow, hopefully grow to fill that space with red gooseberries there. And I've got a raised bed here, I'm going to do some some quick growing vegetables, probably like radishes, rocket, I know, parsley, some herbs. Do the main bulk vegetables in that whole other side over there, which I'll go through in a second. Got some artichokes left over from last year. These here, this is the artichoke stem. I actually didn't harvest that one. I thought I'd regrow a lot this year because it's still in the ground. And I've got some more gooseberries here. These are green gooseberries, different variety again. So I've tried to mix the varieties up, like I said, one stag of the season. And also just to give it a bit of a, you know, nicer taste basically. So you can go through your garden each year with different, different foods to look forward to. So the front of the garden over there is mainly currants. This is mainly gooseberries and raspberries along the fence. And this top area is actually blueberries. So I've got a lot of blueberries. I've got 12 blueberry plants. Again, to stag of the season, so I've gone for like two of each variety, or three of the best ones. I went three of these blueberry herbert. They're all organic uh, blueberry bushes, organic plants, which is really important to get. Yeah, I can't stress the importance enough of getting organic food. Especially if you're growing it yourself to get the best results. This is a pear tree. So I can't remember, I've got the varieties written down, but I can't exactly remember the variety. Get some more bushes over there. So yeah, from the top of this patch you can see, it's just perennial driven basically. And that differs to this side, which is gonna be pretty much purely annual plants and rows. So I've actually put in a row of broad beans here already, as you can see. Well, you can't see that the broad bean jacks are not come up. But I've done a row there, rake right the woodchips back, planted seeds, and then they'll come up well. But yeah, I just walked to the top of the patch and then give you a quick tour. Yeah, so it's completely up to you how you want to structure it. I've chosen to do annuals and perennials on different sides. For me, I think it's just the best. It's easy to manage, and I can have deeper wood chip around the perennials. You know, so I don't have to rake back a lot each year for the annuals, and then it just makes it easier to do the annuals in nicer composted soil rather than. You know, with sieve wood chips on top which is easier to easier to plant in as opposed to deep you know six inches of wood chips which on that side I have done um, to keep the weeds down create more of a forest floor and yeah to keep it clean but that's just my preference so yeah whatever you want to do to create your own food forest yeah go for it but that's my style of doing it and that's what I personally would recommend for the ease and yeah I suppose the looks as well in the summer uh, so yeah, I'll get back to the tour now and I'll show you the annuals. So I'll start at the top here. I've actually got some garlics. These are from last year. I planted these in, I think it was November last year. So these are coming up really good. And they'll probably really start growing now into spring and early summer. And then what I've chosen to do on here, chosen to do here is got these nine markings. These are 30 centimeters apart. And I basically do a row a row at each 30 centimeters like this down there so I've got four in a line and then I've got a wider gap as you can see you can't really see so I've got a wider gap so I've got four wider gap then four more and then a wider gap then four more so basically we'll have four rows here four rows here four rows here four rows here and I've chosen to go for foods that grow well together so for example, I'm doing all lettuces in one foot set of four there, and I'll do maybe all the carrots in one set of four, and beetroot. And again, I'm going to stagger the planting to get the most from the food, so I don't have it all getting ripe at the same time, ready to pick at the same time. Uh, that's just another way to be more abundant over the full year. And that's all next to this strawberry bushes, strawberry plant. But believe it or not, started from six plants about three years ago, so, no, maybe four years ago. I've actually had to shrink it down though, so, pretty amazing. And one of the most unbelievable things about this, I couldn't believe it yesterday. I don't know if you can see what in there. There's actually a hedgehog nesting. I couldn't believe it when I found it. But yeah, they're not even, I've not seen one of them. before. I hadn't seen one of them before I started the garden around our house for a few years so to get one back nesting in the strawberry patch just shows you how 
good it is to work with nature and what you bring in. Like I said, I've got a barn owl coming back into our field, which I'll show you afterwards. The how we've managed the field and it's attracted barn owls because the mice population's really increased. And that's where barn owls typically hunt and live. So you can really work with nature and bring back in. And the last thing in this is this centre row to divide it. These are pea canes. As you can see, very deep wood chip. But the uh, rake back the wood chip here and put some peas in. We're going to be doing that soon because peas you can plant early. Remember, everything I'm doing is direct sown. I'm not going to start anything off indoors. So once it's planted, that's it. You don't have to you know, mess around with transplanting, transplant shock. Just for the ease. And I think things actually do grow better when you have direct sown stuff versus transplanted. So that's the peas. And you've got the centre raspberries it's going to be a raspberry hedge and here we do cucumbers so again in the back there we've got grapes that grape i don't know if it'll, it is meant to grow around here but uh flame seedless flame grapes yeah well it's meant to grow around here and i've pruned it to do an open you know, it's going to do a like that kind of shape it's going to go around there but yeah it's very early on I only planted that last year, last year so it's going to take maybe three years before it get fruit so I'll just give you a full view of the garden before we move on this is the top garden so you can see perennials on that side annuals on this side very empty right now but it will get very very full soon so I'm excited to see what happens so I'm just going to make my way down to the orchard where I've got a total of around 50 fruit trees. These were planted two years ago, no a year ago last year, last February and I've actually added 10 trees this year to extend it a little bit. Uh, as you can see I've got a little pond there, tried to a little pond, that's for hopefully to attract some dragonflies. Yeah but I'm walking down the, to these fruit trees to show you what's going on. Again these probably won't produce this year but it's it's an investment in the future, you know, to get abundance later on, you've really got to invest up front and uh, yeah, just get it planned out and then it'll pay off in the end. So, we've got the fruit trees at the top here. The first fruit tree is there, it goes all the way round up there, round the back, round the, along the fence. So, it's right here plums, apples, pears, and cherries. They're all about one year to two years old, so they're not really producing yet. But they're just starting to take shape. And I've pruned them to hopefully get yeah the shape set early on, like this, like a goblet shape, um, and create better structure in a tree in the future. So you can see another goblet shape, nice shape there. And that one might produce this year, I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, I've just basically tried to create quite a close close set I've planted quite close together so it's gonna be quite a dense feeling food for us basically uh, an orchard where all the trees are fruit trees and it's gonna be really nice to come down to get some fruit uh, in the summer and hopefully working with nature as well track different things and like I said this field has got a very very high population of mice you can actually hear them sometimes when you come down which is pretty amazing and as a result of that we've actually attracted a barn owl that comes hunting here most nights so um, they're quite rare around where we are so it's pretty special to get one of them coming to where we've sort of regenerated the field this hasn't been cut for maybe four years now maybe even more uh, and as you can see it's not 25 feet tall which some people think you need to cut the grass otherwise it'll grow on forever which clearly doesn't you can see uh, there's proof there it actually is such better quality grass because of it because the old grass dies on top of the the new grass in the spring and the new grass is fertilized and grows up through it so this grass is actually greener lush it has higher worm population in the soil than that field there which is a farm field which they cut every year probably two to three times a year so as you can see definitely benefits just leaving nature to do what it does best to let it get on with it and easier for you less work for you and better results for you as well. So, and you can do a cherry tree. So I'm at the back of the food forest here. You see, it 
it goes all the way to about you know, there. So it goes round. So it's quite big. It's on the lower level. Um, it's got good light. Uh, the only thing, only thing is we get quite strong wind coming in from that side a lot of the time. So if you're planning food for us, you might want to think about that. Um, you know, think about where you're going to position yourself for sunlight and wind. Maybe get some wind protection like these trees actually do provide some wind protection. Um, but yeah, so as you can see it's all quite early on. Some trees are getting shaped better than others because they're every year ahead. Or they just took better to what the climate's like here. But most of the varieties do suit this area of uh, Northwest England very well. Like I said, the apple trees grow particularly well here, Victoria plum trees, um, and some variety of cherries. But yeah, just choose what works best for your area. So don't try and grow stuff that doesn't particularly grow well, or don't invest too much in stuff that doesn't, doesn't particularly grow well, because then you might have wasted three to four years getting a fruit tree and the cost of cost and the space of putting it in your garden. And eventually if it doesn't produce that wealth for you it's a waste of investment so that's why it's important to choose the varieties carefully to start and actually spend time planning and think about what you want to put where because it will pay off in the future and it's probably the best investment you can make um like me i planned this quite quite a lot first before i actually put it into action but at the same time you don't want to wait too long because you want to get the fruit trees in the ground and growing otherwise you know you're wasting time growing and you won't get fruit until another year later so i just want to point out i haven't actually got wood chips down here yet and i just wanted to point it out because a bit of a contrast contrast to the top garden up there which is all wood chips ideally i would have wanted to get wood chips down here uh, but it's just very difficult to get down here because the trucks can't really drive down the field uh, and dump it so i'd have to wheelbarrow it all the way from the top up there which is a, a big job and i don't know if it can be to be honest, I don't think we can be bothered doing it for the benefits, so I'm just going to leave it mainly at the top. And it should be interesting to see the difference in quality of fruit as well. Because I know fruit trees grow particularly well in wood chipped areas. But again, this might create its own forest floor. It might grow better, so it'll be an interesting experiment to see. But if I do bring wood chips down, I will only just do a small circle around the trees. Um, just to give them a bit of, bit of weed suppression around the, the tree bases and you know the benefits of wood chips in holding moisture so they don't dry out in the winter in the uh, dry months in summer but yeah so that's really it for the tour and it's quite quick but i just wanted to give you a quick overview of what it's looking like now uh, just before we get into summer um because a lot will change in the next couple couple of months uh and i'll do another update when stuff really starts growing again and i'll be doing quite a few more videos hopefully soon which have been very busy with other things. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching, and I hope you liked the video. Uh, if you did like the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel, because it really helps. Uh, and let me know in the comments if you have any questions. I'll try and answer the best I can. Uh, like I said, I've been busy with quite a lot, of, a lot of other things recently. Hopefully we'll be doing more soon. But yeah, thanks for watching, and see you next time.